soldiers. And this is actually the very first residential district ever constructed in the city of San Antonio. You can see the entire thing free of charge end to end in about 15 minutes. Do not leave San Antonio without seeing La Vida. I'll only say that about La Vida. Very few people go up there. Very interesting place to see. On my left again, coming down from La Vida, capacity 800 people. That is a 1941 Arneson Theater. Overlooks the stage on my right. People ask me, do we use that stage? The answer is a resounding yes. That stage there, fully equipped, lighting, sound, the whole works. By the way, if the Arneson looks a little familiar to anybody, it might be because you watched a 1994 film called This Congeniality with Sandra Bullock. One yep. of the big scenes shot right there at the Arneson. Yeah, there's always one or two. Always one or two. By the way, the Arneson is also one of about four places on the entire North American continent where you can actually find a theater divided right in half like that by a naturally flowing river. Right here at the Ar Arneson in San Antonio, he has one of them. That sculpture on my right, that sits outside of the BWAM, the Briscoe Western Art Museum. Kind of an old Wild West themed museum. All kinds of uh, old restored stagecoaches from the 1800s. There's a large interaction. Right ahead now, you guys, is Presa Street Bridge. Have a good look at it, because you may never see one like it again. This falls into the category of ornamental iron bridge. There are about 20 left in the whole country. 10 of them live right here in San Antonio, Texas. And now, coming up on my right-hand side at river level, that is the one and only island you guys are going to come across on this tour. The first thing you see on that island is a little iron structure called Father Massonet's Table. That, you guys, was put there in 1991, 300 years after the first Catholic Mass was given on the banks of the river. If you look at the island itself, it is actually made up of nothing more than the roots of the tree that grows out of it. That entire structure is just a massive tree growing out of the river. Anyway, that island is shaped like a heart, and that's called Marriage Island. Two to three hundred couples get married right there every single year. Now, legend has it, if you get married on Marriage Island, your marriage will not only be a happy one, but it will last you for the rest of your life. Take it from me, I was married right there. Three times. <laughs> yeah. Am I right now? We have Divorce Island. <laughs> Probably headed back there pretty soon. Anyway, this is where the river kind of widens out. Nice, easy going stretch back here. This whole tree line on my right, by the way, those are all the same type of tree. They're also the most common type of tree you guys will see on this tour. Not only that, but most of them are actually imported from the state of Louisiana. Anybody know what kind of trees we're looking at? This is tricky. You've all heard of it. Pine. Maybe you've never seen it. Not pine trees. No, these are cypress trees. These are cypress, yep. Now, right, guys, on the other side, there it is on my left, towering 400 feet into the air, capped off by the American flag. That is what we call the Tower Life Building. Anybody ever seen the original Ghostbusters movie? Yeah. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> that's an octagonal building built back in 1929, purchased brand new for $3 million by a couple of gentlemen called the Smith & Youngs. They're the ones, by the way, who put the gargoyles way up there. You can get a better look at it from the other side of old St. Mary's Bridge if you like. But anyway, when asked why they wanted gargoyles on their building, they always gave two answers or two reasons. Number one was to scare off bad spirits. Number two was to ward off any bad luck they might encounter in the world of business or real estate. But here's the thing. Those Smith & Young brothers made the mistake of buying that building for $3 million in June of 1929. That was a mistake because what happened a few months later was the stock market crashed. We ended up in the Great Depression, and they had to sell that building off for 10 cents on the dollar at 300,000 bucks. The Smith & Youngs had to leave San Antonio after that happened. They were not only flat broke, but they were also owing a whole cast of characters a whole bunch of money. In fact, we never saw those two again. Straight ahead of us now, that dark red building with a green rooftop. A lot of people ask me if that's a church when they first see it. Now, I think it's because of that steeple-like looking structure poking out of the right-hand side of the rooftop. That's why everyone thinks it's a church. Now, I can assure you that it's not a church. I 
can also assure you, you do not want to confess any sins in that building. That's the Bear County Courthouse. That's been in operation since 1897. We're just letting traffic know we're coming out. Two things here, guys. Number one, this stone structure we're passing underneath right now, this is actually a floodgate. Now, if you look on either side of my shoulders, right about, right about now, those marks on the wall, in that semicircle, that's where a huge steel gate comes up out of the water, locks into vertical position, and that protects downtown from floods. Wow. Number two, now we're making a right-hand turn onto an artificial flood prevention system called the Flood Channel. If you guys look the other way, you'll see why I'm not making a left. That has been a huge amount of flood water. You guys came in from the north right ahead of us, flowed downstream in our direction, and slammed into downtown. In fact, Houston Street, you've probably been there, that goes to, to the Alamo. That was underneath nine feet of rainwater on that day. That's 25 feet higher than these waters right here. 50 people died, and that's when the city decided to assemble this flood channel. This took 20 years to build, by the way, because of the Great Depression. It's a slow project, but it's made out of four basic parts. Uh, one dam, two floodgates, and what we're driving on right here, about a thousand yards of artificially dredged out river. It starts at that stone wall, goes all the way back to that dam. Straight ahead of me now, you guys, there it is. That is the godfather of all cypress trees here in San Antonio at 12 o'clock. That's called the Milam tree. And my L-A-M is named Texas Page Ben who shot and killed a mech sniper on the bridge of that tree, 185, just for the back of the end. That tree, by the way, 90 feet tall, oh, between three and 400 years old. As I mentioned, our city is protected by two floodgates. We passed through the first one. This is the other one right here. This one actually drops straight down like a butcher's knife, like a guillotine. Mm. We gotta get through here right now with this boat because they're gonna test it in about five or 10 seconds. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell that joke because it scares passengers, but I'm not gonna stop. <laughs> On my right hand side, you guys, a little tiki bar there. I'm drawing your attention to it because of its name. It says Hugman's Oasis. Anytime you guys are down here, and notice the name Hugman, that will always refer to the father of the Riverwalk, Robert H. Hugman. He was a young architect and engineer, and he, back in the 1930s, designed this entire Riverwalk before it opened in 1941. Now this little two-story building here, guys, if you look up on the second floor, that is the Esquire Tavern. That is not only the oldest bar anywhere in the San Antonio River, that is probably one of the very oldest bars in Texas. No one knows how far back it goes exactly because it predates all of our records. What we do know is that nothing inside there has been changed in about a century. Nothing's been replaced. Nothing's a perfect time capsule going back to about the year 1920. By the way, there's also a 108 foot long wooden bar in the s -bar. It's the longest in Texas. Go check it out. This is one of our three boat docks we keep down here on the river. This one happens to be situated right outside of the Aztec Theater, up and to the right, right where that semicircular bronze awning is. Now, the old Aztec, you guys, doesn't look like much these days, but back in 1926, when it first opened, this was the hottest place in town. This is where everyone came to catch their favorite black and white movie, silent film, see stars like Charlie Chaplin. Which brings us now, straight ahead of us, the most famous bridge for miles and miles and miles. Anybody recognize that bridge, by the way, from 1990s Hollywood film? That bridge we call Selena's Bridge. That was featured in the 1997 hit film Selena, starring Jennifer Lopez. Lie. Yeah, so, now this bridge is officially called the Robert H. Hugman Bridge. There's that name again, the father of the Riverwalk. Ever since 1997 came around and that movie was released, it has forever been known as Selena's Bridge. It's a pretty big deal here in San Antonio. In fact, oh, you guys, some people that. take this boat tour just to hear the boat captain point out Selena's Bridge. I forgot to mention it one time last week. I heard about it from management. I kid you not. On my left, you guys, very interesting landmark here. We have La Mansion Hotel. Now, prior to being a hotel, this building dates all the way back to 1853, when it was an all-boys boarding school called St. Mary's College. Now today we still have a descendant of St. Mary's College, now it's St. Mary's Law School, situated a few miles up, up the street. But the cool thing about La Mansion is that if you stay in there, you're probably going to stay in inside of an old 19th century classroom. And 
we're heading now on Navarro Street Bridge. Once we're out from underneath this bridge on the other side, you guys look immediately to my left, and I mean immediately to my left, and way, way up into the sky. What you're going to see is a little architectural trick of the eye. It looks like a single freestanding wall ready to topple into the water. Now what that actually is, is a massive triangular building that takes up half a city block. That's the Nix Hospital, built in 1930, and that is, of all things, America's very first air-conditioned hospital. We don't pioneer very much in San Antonio. We don't invent very many things, but by God, we pioneered air conditioning, and we'll tell you about it. <laughs> by the way, if anybody knows Carol Burnett, she yes. was born right there at the next San Antonio native, old Carol Burnett. Comedian. Straight ahead of me, guys, over this bridge, that towering, well, not exactly towering, but that boxy building with that large array of darkened rectangular windows, that's the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Now, that hotel is actually famous for, famous for its height. Not because it's tall, but because it's unusually short. There's a very peculiar reason for that. The city of San Antonio, believe it or not, actually prohibits any building in the city from casting a shadow upon the Alamo in the setting sun. True story. That's why this is limited to 16 stories at that Ohio. And that is because, in fact, the Alamo is on the other side of it. Which means that from here, the best way to get to the Alamo is right through those triple glass doors on the left hand side. That's how you get to the Alamo from the Riverwalk. Now, speaking of the Alamo, Alamo, you guys, is the number two, not the number one. It is the number two most visited tourist destination in all of Texas. Anybody think they know what number one might be? Two is the Alamo. Number three, you would never guess it if I gave you guys a thousand chances. But here it is. You are riding on it right now. These Go Rio boats, number three most visited destination in the entire state of Texas. We sell more tickets than the Houston Astros year in and year out. Probably because we're open 365 days a year. They only get 81 home games. That's a four and a half to one edge, but who's counting? <laughs> By the way, the most visited tourist destination in all of North America, a little place called Central Park, New York. Now, if you guys look back at that bridge behind me, that, that marks the beginning of about a hundred yard stretch of river that we're on right now that we like to call Restaurant Road. This is it on both sides of us. This is the epicenter of all the great Tex-Mex cuisine you guys can find right here in the heart of the city. River level dining, balcony dining, homemade guacamole, you name it. It's Tex-Mex, it's on the menu right here along Restaurant Road. In fact, by the time I drop you guys off at the end of this tour, we will have passed by so many restaurants, whether you see them all or not, that if you were to visit a new one every week, it would take you nearly a year and a half to visit every last one. On my right here, this is the final restaurant on Restaurant Road. Called Casa Rio. This is the first restaurant to ever open their doors on the Riverwalk. They have been open and at it seven days a week since the year 1946. We're going to take just a quick pause here and check for traffic on my left because for the second time on this tour, we're going to be getting off of the natural river and onto another artificial extension. Now the water on this extension just slightly deeper, about six feet deep, hard concrete bottom. Now that doesn't mean that it's devoid of wildlife. We do have some fish in here, a couple species of turtle. Alligator. In fact, if you're the type to walk up and down the shores or the banks of this river and look at the water, you may have seen it and you can confirm that yes, we do have water snakes in this river. In fact, if you look at the water, typically not more than about 30 or 40 minutes go by without seeing one of those brown and white water snakes sit across from one bank to the other. Some of them, by the way, several feet long, and they will on occasion fall up on the other side of the usually It's usually one on our boat. No, I'm just kidding. Kill it. Straight ahead of us, guys, those two large hotel buildings. 
If I can draw your attention to the one on the left, that is the Marriott. That is the largest hotel by volume in the city of San Antonio. Yes, sir. That is also the location. The 1985 Guinness Book of World Records accomplishment happened right there. Here's what happened. Well, it used to stand there, and what, what is part of the story was the old Fairmount Hotel. It had been there since 1906. The Marriott bought their land up, and by 1985, they wanted to demolish the Fairmount to build that Goliath of a hotel you see there today. But the city of San Antonio intervened, and they said, no, you may not even put a scratch on the Fairmount because of, it, because of its historical value. So they came to an agreement. Instead of knocking down the Fairmount, they got up underneath it, they dug it out, and they dragged it out onto the street in one massive piece. From there, they put it aboard 18 dollies and rolled it six blocks south of here to its final resting place, where it still, to this day, operates as a full-service, fully functioning hotel. You can stay there tonight at the Fairmount. Now, that old Fairmount, you guys, as it rolled down the streets, it traveled at an average pace of 0 0.04 miles per hour. It took five days to go six blocks. Keep in mind, this is 1985, and the whole city of San Antonio is going crazy for this record-breaking event. They come out and line the sidewalks by the thousands with the beach blankets and picnic baskets and lawn chairs, and they watch this old rickety hotel travel down the road at four one-hundredths of a mile per hour for five long days. And that is the world's largest scale move of its kind. We're going to hang it left here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as I do, if I can draw your attention instead off to the right, I'll point at it so you don't miss it. There it is. That is a 750-foot tall observation deck, bar restaurant. Yes, it does rotate every 60 minutes. That is the second most iconic building in San Antonio, second only to the Alamo itself. That's the 1968 Tower of the Americas. Now, here's the thing. Believe it or not, there are two ways to get to the top of that tower. Number one, you can take a four-minute elevator ride. Or number two, you can climb by foot. 952 stairs that are situated right up the middle on the inside of that old structure. We used to have races in San Antonio when the world was kind of a different place. See who could do it the fastest. The all-time world record set back in 1981 by a local 16-year-old high school sophomore never to be broken again. This kid knocked that out in just over five minutes flat. Now, if you run the arithmetic on that, that's nearly 150 feet of upward progression a minute. Wow. Beat that. This was another one of our three boat docks here. This one is good for uh, cold margaritas, some souvenirs. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We have done it. Together, we have arrived at the second largest mall in the city of San Antonio. Here it is straight ahead around this left-hand bend. This, you guys, is what we call the shops at the river center inside there are 125 stores spread out over a million square feet of commercial real estate within these walls we have a build-a-bear we have a legoland we have an aquarium we have three movie theaters including an imax in fact if you check out these exterior walls they are made out of 80 percent glass 20 percent credit cards <laughs> we're just gonna make a little new turn around the old mall lagoon here things about our boats. I get a lot of questions about our boats. And at this point in my career, I'd like to answer those questions preemptively. So here we go. We have 43 boats in our fleet driven by 30 drivers. Every boat you'll notice is whisper quiet. That's because we run 100% on electricity. We charge up our boats, every one of them, every night at one of two marinas we have here on the river. Every boat is propelled by one single small propeller situated directly below my feet. Now, if you look at our boats, you of course see that they come in different colors. But if you take a closer look at our boats, you'll notice the distinguishing, the, the real distinguishing feature, which, which are the uh, designs etched into all the side panels. Now, this boat is surrounded by a flock of doves. We call this the Peace and Love Boat. Now, we got a peace and love boat because we feel here in San Antonio that the river sort of lends our city an air of peace and tranquility, so we got the peace and love boat for that. Now, if you guys keep your eyes open for it, you might even spot our tricentennial boat. That's the boat marked by the number 300. Yeah. We have a tricentennial boat. Yeah, you've seen it. We have it because in 2018, 
San Antonio celebrated its 300th year as a city, which makes it almost unbelievably America's second oldest surviving city, the second oldest in the entire country, which begs the question, does anybody know what number one is? Is it the Up on the left here, guys, that statue, that's the newest addition to the Riverwalk. We call that the Stargazer statue. That was made out of 100% volcanic stone imported from Mexico. Now, I say it's 100% volcanic stone, but once we're on the other side of this bridge and you look back at it, you will notice one element of that piece that is made out instead of pure white marble. And if you look at that little device in her hand, there's a little hole drilled right into the middle of it. Now, what they say she's doing is she's staring into that device to, um, I think it's to contemplate when the Cowboys are going to finally win a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. You can check me on that. A couple things about San Antonio. Not the city or not the river, but the person. We are, in fact, named after a gentleman from Antiquity named San Antonio. Now, if you translate his name into English, it's St. Anthony. If you ask if it's about Catholic, like my old Irish grandmother, she will tell you. He's the patron saint of lost objects. Now, here's the thing. Speaking of lost objects, we drain this river dry once a year. Not the whole river, but all around town. We drain it dry. It remains dry for three days, and on day four, we pump the water back in. It's cleaned, it's filtered, and it's good to go for another 12 months. But during those three days, you guys, when this river is dry, what kind of lost object do you think we find at the bottom to the tune of about 500 of them per year? Plane. Cell phones, you got it. 500 cell phones a year. And we do find slightly dodgier things like wedding rings as well. Oh. Lots of those. Don't ask me how they got there. <laughs> Up and to the left, guys, over that stone wall, kind of picking through the trees there. That white hotel. That looks like kind of a plain, white, ordinary, rather unremarkable looking hotel. But that is the Hilton Palacio del Rio, and that is no ordinary hotel. This hotel, you guys, was for a long time in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the fastest hotel of its size ever constructed on planet Earth. Here's how they put it together. The year was 1968, and the World Fair was coming to town. San Antonio needed one more hotel, but didn't have time to build it. So they needed a new way to construct hotels, and that's what they used to piece this thing together. Every room above the fourth floor of this hotel was constructed one at a time, like little cookie cutters off site. Not only that, but every room was also fully furnished. I mean, the carpets, the beds, the towel racks, the TVs, the dresses, the court hangers, the soap dishes, everything. Every room was completed from wall to wall, from floor to ceiling. checked in, it was just 202 days, and that is a 500 room hotel. That was a world record, that's the story of the Hilton, and then with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the end of the road, we are now approaching the place where I picked you up, which means this is where I gotta drop you guys off to. Market Street. I wanna thank you guys for coming on out with us, I hope you had a good time and learned a few things. Do me a favor, just stay seated in the boat till I jump out and get us all safely and securely tied down. Tipping your boat driver is always, is always accepted, greatly appreciated, but only for a job well done. And with that, do yourself a quick favor. Check on all sides of you. Make sure you're not leaving anything behind. If you do leave something behind, I will find it. I will turn it into lost and found for you. Once again, guys, thanks for coming along. I'm going to jump out of the boat here, get us tied down, and I'll come back in and let you out in just a second. Be right back, guys.